with Jesus. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We are on our series called Parables with Jesus. And this is episode two. This is the second one, and I'm excited. All right. But before we get into it, share this with somebody at the end or right now. Share it with somebody because I believe it's going to bless them. I believe it's going to bless you. And, 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 and we should pass on blessings. Amen. We shouldn't keep them all to ourselves. We should pass them on. So let us pray before we get into the word. Dear God, we just want to thank you for this beautiful day, Lord God. We want to thank you for this beautiful morning, Lord God. We want to thank you that you gave us another opportunity of life, that we woke up. There's some people that didn't wake up this morning, Lord God, and, and, and we did, so we know that it's a blessing, Lord God. And Lord, just open up our ears, our minds, our hearts, our bodies, our souls, Lord God, to receive whatever word you're trying to install within us, Lord God. That it may be a blessing, that it may grow and it may blossom, Lord God, that we may be a blessing to others, Lord God. Because I believe this morning you want to talk to us and you want to bless us. So we thank you, Lord God, in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right. So we are on Matthew. We're, we're still in Matthew. We're going to go back to Matthew chapter 13. Okay. But this is a different parable and we're going to break it down. Matthew chapter 13, verse uh, 1 through 9. And then we're going to skip. And go through 18 through 23. So if you want to write those down. Now this one is called the parable of the sower. And it's talking about different types of people who hear the word of God. So this, you're going to fall into one of these types of people. We're going to talk about four different types of people that hear the word, okay, but take it indifferently. So pay attention because I want you to assess yourself and see what kind of person you fall in, which one of the four you are, okay? And, if you, and, and don't worry, if you're one of the other ones or this, it's fine. Get back to being the right one, okay? So Matthew chapter 13, verse 1. That same day, Jesus went out to the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him. And he got into a boat and sat in it. While all the people stood on the shore, then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. And as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up and the plants were scorched, they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. So this is talking about four different types. Four different types of people when it comes to hearing and receiving God's word. The number one was the seed that fell along the path or the road. Okay. Number two was the seed that fell on rocky places. Three was the seed that fell among the thorns. And four, the seed that fell on good soil. Okay. Now, before I break it all down. We're going to skip over to verse 18 through 23 because this is Jesus breaking it a little bit down. Okay. So verse 18. So Matthew chapter 13, verse 18 through 23. Because the disciples were like, okay, well, what does that mean, Jesus? What does that mean? And so Jesus began to tell them. And this is what he said to them. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. So along the path, and I'm going to break it each once because this is number one, right? The seed that was sown along the path or the road. Back in the, 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 the days, they called it the path. But today we would see it as the road. Seed that that uh, fell along the road, okay? 
And what does the road signify? A road is too busy. A road is, is people trying to get from point A to point B. It's so busy and, 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 and they don't want to stop and hear the word. Okay? That's what a road is. Right now, if you go to a highway and you try to tell somebody something, you'll see the car. Right? I mean, they're not going to hear you. They're going from point A to point B. Okay? This is today's society. We live in a fast lane pace. We want to get to point A to point B in our life. We want to say, okay, this is what I got to do. I, I, I don't have time to listen to your word, Jesus. I don't have time to hear you out. I, I, I want to drive through word. I want to drive through message. That means you don't want to dine in message. You want to drive through message. You just want to get it and go. Instead of sitting down, talking with Jesus, taking it all in. Now, a lot of times when we do dine-ins, right, we, um, I mean, uh, drive throughs they, they really ain't that good, man. I just had a drive through and I won't mention the, the restaurant because I was like, okay, yeah, I haven't had this in a while. And I went through it, and, and, and it, just, it, it just didn't do it, man. It was quick, but it wasn't that good. It wasn't good. It was terrible. It was terrible, man. And so, and then I, when I get my wife's cooking, oh, man, that's, that stuff's good. That's the difference. I'm dining in, in the house, I'm like, ooh, you know? So that's the difference. We want a quick word, and we want to get it and go. We don't have time for you, Jesus. Just give me the blessing. Just give me whatever I, I, I want, right? Just give me what I want. Give me, give me, give me, give me. And we don't have time for you, Jesus, right? So what happens there? It says here that the, the, the evil one, right, the devil, comes and snatches it away. So that, that, that drive through blessing is no good. You want to dine in with Jesus. So don't be the first one. And, and if that's you today, if, if your life is too busy, hey, God's calling you. Watch this. God's talking to you. If you're too busy for God, God is saying, hey, I want you to get to know me. I want to dine in with you. All right? Now, let's go to the next one. So that was the first one, the seed that fell along the path. Okay? Now, I want you to realize this is, think about yourself, where you're at right now, because you can change that. Okay, as long as you realize where you're at, if, you, if you're one of these, the, the, uh, um, if you are one of these path people or the road people that you're too busy, your life is too busy, God's calling you right now. Slow your row, man. Right? Slow your row. I know you have a lot of uh, things you want to accomplish in this life, but slow your row. Spend some time with Jesus. Watch. This is number two. Okay, this is the rocky place. Verse 20. And it's still Jesus talking right here. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word at once, receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time when trouble or persecution comes because of the word. Uh, they quickly fall away. So, number two. Okay. Are the people that hear the word get overly excited about it? They are like the young kids, okay? They're not mature yet. Have you ever seen a, a, a young kid learning how to ride a bike? They're very excited, very, you know, they're like, yeah, I could do this. And you show them a couple moves and you're still trying to train them, but they're like, no, 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 I got this. I know how to do it. You just tell them a couple little things and they're like, I know how to do it now but they haven't had much practice yet. So when they're like, ah, I got this, all right, cool, let me go, let me go. And then they go, and then they start to do it, and then all of a sudden they, they pedal and they fall and they, they hurt themselves. And they get up, they cry, they get all mad, they're frustrated, and they're like, I don't wanna do this anymore, right? Because they got hurt. Ah, that's what it's talking about here. These are the Christians that hear the word, they get overly excited, they're like, 
okay, yeah, pastor, yeah, yeah, I know, I already know how this works. You, you told me a little bit, and so now I know everything. Well, no, 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 you're not mature yet. Hold on, hold on, I still got more to teach you. So God's like, wait a minute now, I still got more to teach you. And they're like, no, 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 I got this. I'm ready. And then they go out, they go into the world, and, and, and something happens, they hurt themselves, life happens, right? Breakups, mess ups, you know, life happens, things happen of this world, you know, uh, maybe people dying and all these things happening. And, and they're like, ah, I don't want to be a Christian anymore. This doesn't work. Well, it does. It does work. You still got to spend more time with your father. Amen. You're not mature yet, but you'll get there if you spend that time. So that's, that's what it's talking about. That's number two. The seed that fell on the rocky places. Okay? So if that's you right now, I'm telling you right now, do not quit this Christian walk. If you're in that verge of saying, ah, oh, this doesn't work. Uh, hold on. Pump your brakes, man. It does. Do not quit. Get back in your word. Get back into spending time with God. Watch. Do not quit. Get to maturing. You need to have the root. In the rocky places, it doesn't have the root. It doesn't have the root to grow. You need to get rooted. Watch this. And then, verse 22. This is still Jesus talking right here. Verse 22. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. Ah. So this one is number three, the seed that fell among the thorns, right? Now, this is talking about the Christians that have gotten comfortable around the thorns. So this is talking about Christians that maybe matured at once, the, the, the longtime Christians that have gotten comfortable around the thorns. What are the thorns? Right? The deceitfulness of wealth, right? The worries of this life, right? The desires uh, of, uh, uh, of this world, See, this is, this is the Christians that have gotten too comfortable around all the sinning and all the things and say, well, this is just how it is. Right? Well, no, that's not what God says. You got to get back to the word. You got to get back to what God tells us. Just because the world gets comfortable around this doesn't mean that you're supposed to get comfortable with the things of the world. This is talking about the worries of the world. This is talking about the, 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 the Christians that are following too much worldly things instead of God's word. They're trying to chase all the blessings of the world instead of chasing the blesser, Jesus Christ. Instead of chasing the, the blesser, God, Jehovah Almighty. See, there's no way around it. You know, they're too worried and focused trying to make it big, chasing the things of the world just like the worldly people do. God has called you out of the world. You're in the world, but you're not supposed to get comfortable within the world. He has called you to be different. He has called you to be a light in the darkness. Not just to be in the darkness. See? You can still uproot a, 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 among thorns. You can still uproot and be a good Christian among the thorns. But don't get too comfortable among the thorns where you become a thorn yourself. A thorn to others. Woo! That's good. Thank you, Jesus. I hope you're getting this. If that is you, if you have gotten too comfortable as a Christian, get back to knowing God. Get back to reading. Get back to spending time with Him. Get back to praising. Get back to worshiping. Get back to being close with the Father. Amen. 
Watch, number four. And this is where we want to get to, man. This is where we want to get to. This is the good soil, okay? This is what every Christian, every person should strive to be. Watch this. Watch what Jesus says about this. But the seed, and this is verse 23, but the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding 160, 30 times what was sown. So this is, good. This is the person that, that hears the word and is producing a good crop. So what does that mean? What, what does this mean? You want to be good soil. When you put a seed in good soil, it springs out, right? We talked a little bit last week about that. It springs out. You have to be good soil. So the seed is the word of God, okay? We are on different paths, and we want to get to be, you should be trying to get to be a good soil for God's word. So, okay, Pastor David, how, how do you get to be a good soil? I want to be a good soil. Thank you that you asked, okay? How do you get to be a good soil? By praying, okay? By praising God, by worshiping God, by spending time with God, by giving him the first fruits of all your life. So, first fruits mean you're giving him your first fruits in time, you're giving him your first fruits in, in and, and, and praise and worship and, and, and your ties, everything. Giving them your everything. Because he comes first before in your life. So when you're saying, God, you are my numero uno, my number one. When you wake up, you thank God. You're like, thank you, Jesus. You are number one to me. Instead of checking your Facebook or checking Twitter. I, ever been, I mean, there's all kinds of wars going on on Twitter, right? or checking Instagram, or ticky talking I know it's TikTok. I like to call it ticky talking Okay? The first thing you should do when you wake up, before checking emails, before checking calls, is get to your word. Thank God. Just spend that little time, because that is the beginning of your day. That is your first fruit. You're giving him that very first of your day. The very first attention. Just thank God. Begin to pray for you. Begin to pray for your family. Begin to pray for others. Worship him. Praise him. Give him your all. He is number one. When he becomes number one in your life, you are going to start to produce 30, 60, even to 100 fold. 100% production. 100% blessings upon your life. Ain't that amazing? So, This is being prosperous. And you say, well, I'm not perfect. See, that's the great thing. This is not being perfect. How do you, how do you know? This is, the, uh, this is not being perfect because some of us are going to produce 30. Some of you are going to produce 60. Some of us are going to produce 100-fold. Hmm. Right? How does that work? That's because we're not perfect. See, we're not perfect. I'll give you an example. When farmers that are experienced have learned from their mistakes in farming, they start to produce better crops, bigger crops, better production, a better harvest. See, when we learn from our mistakes and lies, but we keep God numero uno, number one, we start to learn from our mistakes and we begin to produce better in our lives. A better harvest. Bigger blessings. See? This is prosperous. This is about being prosperous. And I want to be at a hundredfold. The great thing about it is that you can be at a hundredfold because it says so right here. If you're at 20% or 30% or 60%, it's fine. It's fine. Keep getting closer to God. See what he does in your life. 
See, this doesn't mean about being extremely rich. That's not what I'm talking about. This is, means about being extremely productive, uh, extremely wealthy upon your life. And that could be in all aspects of life. But wealthy means more than money. See? You could be wealthy in your family. You could be wealthy in your body. You could be wealthy in your mindset. Amen? This is about producing results in the kingdom of God. And we can do that. We can be prosperous for Jesus Christ. Why? By being more obedient, by getting closer to him, right? We can be prosperous in other people's lives. Because what does a crop do? The crop, the whole production of crop is not for just you. It's for others. So when you begin to get closer to God, it's not going to be a blessing just in your life. Yes, it is going to be a blessing in your life, but not just for you. It's going to be a blessing upon your children, upon your grandchildren, upon your friends, your friendships. It's going to produce in multiple things. Amen. Do you receive that this morning? I hope you receive it. I hope you're blessed by this. So think about yourself. What type of person are you, where you're at, of these number four, okay? And if you're in one of one, two, or three, do you want to get to number four? I know I do. Amen? So, I pray that after this, you'll begin to figure out your relationship with God, get closer to Him, uh, 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 and start to talk to Him, because He wants to hear from you. Each and every single day, He wants to hear from you. Ah, but... The other hand, you got to hear from him too. So don't just talk. Pay attention. Have that ear to hear God. Get to your quiet place. Get to praying. Get to listening to God. That's what praise, worship, we begin to get closer to God. Amen? Trust him in all aspects of your life. In health, in wealth, in your finances, in everything. Be that good soil. When he blesses you with some money, be that good soil. Help some other people. Be that good soil. Amen? That's how you produce more. If you're a blessing to others, God will bless you because he trusts you to be a blessing to others. And that's in everything. Okay? So I hope you're blessed by this. And I hope you get closer to God. And I pray that you start to begin to produce 30, 60, and 100 fold upon your life. Hey, God, hey, man, hey, man, hey, man. So, before we go, let us pray. Dear God, we just thank you for this beautiful word, Lord God, that, that we want to be good soil, Lord God. Help us to be good soil, Lord God. Help us to produce better in upon our lives, Lord God, that we may produce better for others, Lord God, for our families, for, 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 uh, for, for our loved ones, Lord God. Help us to be that good soil. And Lord God, forgive us of any wrongs that we have done. We, we, we are sorry. We come to you, to your throne, to ask for forgiveness. We thank you, Lord God, for your many blessings and the things that you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. See you next week. God bless you.